people that are fans of Five Nights at Freddy's, the fact that their favorite game could be based on a real tragic event is a little more than a myth. One possibility for the origin of the story out of many others. It's just another edgy piece of the lore, something to dismiss as a made-up connection. However, I believe there's far more to it than just that. I only learn the details of the game because my son is super into it. We talk about games together as a way of bonding, otherwise I never would have played it. However, once I realized that Freddy Fazbear's is obviously a mimic of Chuck E. Cheese, I started listening, and once I got the full story, I was convinced that the whole thing is based on something I experienced. Way back in 1993, I was working at Chuck E. Cheese. It was my crappy part-time job in college where I always got stuck working the late shift. Between the lifeless lighting, the uncanny animatronics, and the weird families, I was always creeped out. However, the thing that would put me most on edge was a coworker of mine who we called Nate. Nate was one of those guys that always seemed angry about something. Every time he looked at me, it was like I'd just kicked his dog or something. And whenever we were around each other, he would harass me. Whether it was splashing dirty dishwater in my face or throwing me under the bus for something he did, he always made my shift ten times worse. Plus, he got into arguments with the managers every day because he was always late with a BS excuse. Aside from the incident, the most psychotic stun he ever pulled was already heinous. He had just spent 45 minutes in the bathroom supposedly deep cleaning it. I went in there right after to take a dump while on my break, and he had clearly not done a single thing. What's worse, when I sat down on the toilet, I felt something drip on my head. I looked up and saw an entire turd stuck to the ceiling. I flipped out and reported it to my manager. They logically suspected it was Nate's doing, but he never fessed up to it, and there was no way of proving it. Just from the look on his face, though, I know he did it. Probably as some sick joke, or maybe just because he was sick in the head. Even after he got away with throwing his poop, he held a grudge against me for reporting. The next night, Nate and I worked. We got stuck late after clothes cleaning up after a busy day. At some point, Nate disappeared, but that wasn't unusual. A few minutes later, while I was sweeping around the stage area, I was walking by one of the big Chuck E. Cheese suits, when all of a sudden, it grabbed me. I punched the head of the suit right off, and who else was wearing it but Nate? laughing like he was some sort of comedic genius. Both me and Nate got sent home early over the commotion. The managers must have had a talk afterwards, because the next day, as soon as Nate showed up for work, the owner fired him on the spot. Of course, Nate flipped his lid and screamed his head off at the entire store. He almost started a fist fight, but then somebody yelled that they were calling the cops and Nate finally stopped throwing a tantrum and stormed out, slamming the door so hard it cracked the glass. After that, it seemed like I was free from Nate's constant tormenting. For a glorious few months, that was the case, until he showed up again. <gasps> I was working at the food bar when I spotted Nate staring at me from across the restaurant. He was pretending to play an arcade game, but the entire time he was glaring right at me. I tried to ignore it, but he was stalking the restaurant for hours, and every time I looked over it, he was already looking at me. Then, he came up to me in order to shake, and he was just as antagonistic as he always was. This better be perfect, you hear me? If you're gonna steal my job, you better be good at it. Nate, you never even worked front of house. You never made shakes. Shut up! How would you like to get fired over some bull crap? I had to roll my eyes and sigh, but I was hiding the fact that I was scared. There was something even more unhinged about him then. Eventually, I went on break, and like usual, my first move was to go to the bathroom for a long dump. I soon realized I wasn't alone in the bathroom. There was someone in the stall next to me, laughing like a psycho. I recognized that voice. It wasn't just any creep. It was Nate. Every day I spent working with him came rushing back and I was suddenly terrified of being alone with him. I didn't make a sound. I was glad he left the bathroom after a bit and I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing I could get back to business as usual, except there was nothing usual about that day. A few minutes later, I heard a loud pop from the restaurant, followed by screaming. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, but I wanted to convince myself it was just balloons popping. But then I heard it again, and again, and again. Despite this, I continued to delude myself into thinking it was just balloons, and I stayed put. Out of nowhere, somebody burst into the bathroom. I watched their legs as they walked up to my door. It smells like shit! What the hell did you eat?! They kicked the door with full force. What do you want? Stop it! Despite my pleas, they continued to kick the stall. I knew they would break it down before long, so I panicked and reached into the toilet bowl. I pulled out the log I just laid and lobbed it over the door. Ah! Everything is brown! You stupid idiot! I must have nailed him right in the face, because it was enough to get him to leave me alone. Afterwards, I finished up and cleaned off my hands, then left the bathroom to go back to work. Unfortunately, once I stepped back into the restaurant, I saw nothing but catastrophe. People were either hiding under tables and chairs or laid out on the floor. 
I had no idea what was going on, but it had been going on the whole time I was in the bathroom. Nate did all of it, and had just left, but the cops were just showing up. Later I found out that Nate sought revenge for getting fired and came back to take it out on a few employees. He was arrested not long after at his mother's apartment. I was lucky to be in the bathroom when he did it, otherwise I wouldn't be alive right now. Knowing all this, and from what I've been told about Five Nights at Freddy's, the parallels are just uncanny to me. I believe this is what the story of the game is based on. The story was inspired by a tragic incident that most people believe to be the origin of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. It was an incident that happened in 1993 when a man named Nathan Dunlap, a former employee of the Chuck E. Cheese restaurant, was frustrated about being fired five months prior. His revengeful attack left a total of four deceased and one critically injured. The correlation behind the incident in Five Nights at Freddy's is that there had been many underlying resemblances. Like for instance, the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria's resemblance to Chuck E. Cheese, and how the setting of the game encompasses the year of the crime, 1993. There are many more similarities to the victims and the characters in the game itself online, but here was just a handful that summarized the deadly events. <laughs> You're listening to True Horror Stories with your host, Horror Shorts Party. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. And now, for a story that's sure to question that opportunity for gainful employment. Uh, I think that's the right address. Hey, are you there yet? No, but I'm only a few minutes away. Okay, perfect. I want to take this opportunity to go over the details of the job with you. I mean, it's all in the contract. So, for the first go around, we're just gonna hire you for five shifts. We want to see how you handle the job. <laughs> I think I'll be able to handle it just fine. I've had security jobs before. Yeah, yeah, but Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria is different. We aren't your run-of-the-mill Chuck E. Cheese or suburban malls. Freddy Fazbear has personality. Personality? Like charm? No, like liveliness. He's got vigor, you know? Anyway, so all you really need to do is sit in a security room and watch the cameras. You don't have to do any rounds throughout the building. We actually encourage you not to do so, or you could incur penalties from your paycheck. What? How am I supposed to check the blind spots? Don't worry about the blind spots. That's not your contract. Listen, man, I know what the contract says, but I won't be able to ensure the security of your property if I can't do physical rounds. I'm a little concerned about some of the language of the job description. Well, if you can't follow instructions, then I'll give the job to someone else. I've got two other guys in line for this job. Nope, don't do that. I, I need the money. I'll do whatever you say. Just go ahead. If you already know what you're doing, then you can reference the contract if you have any questions. Good luck. Good luck? Wait, what do you mean, good luck? Jeez, what a jerk. You have arrived at your destination. <laughs> oh, shit! What the hell was that? You absolute moron! That's right, get out of here, you idiot! At least I'm already here. I'll worry about you tomorrow, I guess. What the hell? No wonder they need a security guard. Ugh. Hey, kid! You can't be in here! We're closed! Ugh, what a great start to the job. Hey, kid! What are you doing in here? It's too late for you to be out. You need to go home. Hey, are you okay? Ah! Jesus Christ! What in the world is going on here? Uh, now I gotta find that kid. But no rounds, right? Where's the camera room then? Man, this place gives me the creeps. Just one camera at a time? Really? Where's the selection of you all? 
main stage, hallway one, hallway two, party room, kitchen. That's it? I could really use some more coverage. Wait a second. One of them is missing. Did that stupid kid run off with it? Where did he even go? Can't see a damn thing from here. Screw the contract. God damn it. I'm letting some random kid steal property on my first night. I won't be keeping this job, I guess. <sighs> Screw this! No freaking wonder they didn't want me to leave this room! They didn't tell me those things could move on their own! <sighs> come on, come on! Where is he? <gasps> no, not the dang chicken, too! How is this possible? Oh, but, but where did the bear go? He was just right there. He's not there. Oh, come on. Are they all alive? No. How are they so fast? What do they want with me? No. No, 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 no. I, I can't do this. I have to get out of here. Damn it. Just leave me alone. Can't open doors, can you? This story was inspired by the infamous incident where five Chuck E. Cheese customers suddenly went missing. We made an animation based on it on our last Chuck E. Cheese video, so please be sure to check that out. However, we felt it was fitting to revisit the conspiracy, as most people think the whole Five Night franchise was based on that alleged case, as many people speculate the victims' bodies are hidden within the animatronics as shown in the video game. Whether the whole thing was an internet hoax or not, we'll let you make that judgment. This presentation may contain language and scenes which may be objectionable to certain individuals. Viewer discretion is advised. miserable teenager. Honestly, I spent most of my time crying and the rest of my time having panic attacks. I guess part of it was anxiety, but most of it was because of my family, especially my brother. He was horrible to live with. He would take every chance that he got to bully me and make my life as bad as possible. My parents did nothing to stop him. In fact, most of the time my dad encouraged him. I was a big disappointment to everyone and no one really gave a shit about me. One year, my birthday was coming up, which to most people would be a happy occasion. But to me, it was just another opportunity for my family to ruin my life. My family, and even more so my brother, would always torment me about the upcoming day and make sure I felt as miserable as possible. They'd count down the days and I'd always end up crying a lot because I was petrified of what was coming. This year for my birthday, my family was forcing me to go to this creepy place that I absolutely hated. It 
was this local pizzeria called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. I dreaded every night before it went down. I tried to think about anything else, but it was difficult when my brother would constantly rub it in my face. Just three more days to go. No, I don't want to go! Shut up, you spoiled, inconsiderate little brat. We're going to Freddy Fazbear's whether you like it or not. I was always shut down and forced to do whatever to appease my brother and dad, despite it being my own birthday. When the big day finally came, I tried everything I could to get out of it, but my brother and dad both forced me to go. Plus, my brother had invited his friends too, so I was completely outnumbered. I had no choice. I hated it and I wailed and cried the whole way there. It didn't seem to do anything but make them laugh though. My feelings didn't matter to them. The reason I was so terrified of the pizzeria was mostly because of the animatronics. They were so creepy. They were these big robots that constantly moved their mouths like they were singing and stared straight ahead with these dead eyes. They really freaked me the hell out. It looked like they were real, like someone was actually inside those suits. My family just saw all of this as a big joke though. My brother and his friends kept laughing it up and making jokes about how miserable I was. Even my dad seemed to take pleasure in my discomfort. We ate dinner there and started playing some games. I wasn't really into any of it. I was scared shitless of the animatronics on stage and I couldn't think about anything else. They all always had the same expressions on their faces, the same fake looking smile, their mouths constantly moving up and down, slightly out of beat with the music. Throughout the night, I played some arcade games and did everything that I could to avoid the stage. Just catching a glimpse of it was enough to make my heart beat faster. It was pretty difficult to avoid though. Everything in that place was centered around the robots and the music. I could swear that I saw the animatronics looking at me across the room. Then suddenly, everything got a thousand times worse. My brother and his friends cornered me by a Pac-Man machine. I knew my brother well enough to know that something bad was going to happen. I just didn't know what. Then they circled around me like some sort of gang. My brother looked almost deranged, and his friends didn't look much better. My brother smiled at me. Hey, you want to get a closer look at the stage? I whimpered a little. I was beginning to guess where this was going. Come on, guys. You know I hate them. I think you just need to get to know them better. They all started tightening the circle. I watched helplessly as they got closer and closer. There was no way I could outrun all of them. Please, just leave me alone. Grab them. Then they all started running at me and trying to grab me. I struggled against them with everything I had, but there were just too many of them and they were all bigger and stronger than I was. They grabbed me easily and started pulling me forward. I was screaming and crying, terrified of what they were going to do. Please just let me go! Why are you doing this? Then they started dragging me toward the stage and the animatronics. I went completely hysterical at that point. I fought against them, doing anything I could to try to break free. Just let me go! You guys are insane! What the hell are you doing? I couldn't let them bring me to that stage, but it was no use. They were too strong. They brought me closer and closer, all of them laughing while they did it. I could tell how much they were enjoying it, but I still wasn't fully sure of what they were going to do. Then they started to lift me above them. <gasps> no! Please! Please stop it! They started bringing me up towards the closest animatronic, like they were sacrificing me to it. I was sobbing uncontrollably controllably and begging them to stop. I'd never been more terrified. What are you doing? Please! Ah! As they lifted me closer, the animatronics started to chomp faster than usual, completely out of beat with the music. Then it got faster and faster. I couldn't focus on anything besides its mouth going up and down repeatedly, almost hungrily. Then it started losing control and going psycho. No! Help me, somebody! Just when I thought it couldn't get any faster, it jolted towards my head. Ah! No! This story was inspired by the infamous crying child from the FNAF series. The animation sums up the whole story in a nutshell, but there was a more disturbing true backstory behind this. This story was really inspired by an incident that happened at a Chuck E. Cheese in Boston, Massachusetts. A man had been fined $500 for allegedly assaulting a Chuck E. Cheese mascot because he claimed that the mouse had pinned his son and cornered him by the arcade games. Another eerie resemblance, the son was also celebrating his birthday at the Chuck E. Cheese. 